In this video, we are diving into how to generate custom scratch blocks that look just like this. Or just normal blocks. So without further ado, let's get started. Now the tool we'll be using today is called Scratch Block. I've got the link down in the description so be sure to check that out. So how do we generate this custom block? Well, it's pretty simple. All we need to do is write some specific codes. And don't worry, I'm going to walk through all the easy syntax to create block in this video. And you can also find everything I explain on the Scratch Wiki page which I've linked in the description below. So first, when we start typing just about anything, first we'll see a basic custom block pop-up and there's a specific syntax that we have to use to generate blocks and i'll be speed running through all the easy syntax that we will need first of all to add numbers we can add numbers using the round brackets or parentheses around the number for text input just use square brackets instead of round brackets and we can even add color inputs like the pen blocks and operator blocks using hexadecimal codes inside the square brackets. There we go. If you want to add not text, not numbers, but variables, just type the text inside round brackets and Scratch will recognize it as a variable. And if you need drop down menus, it's really easy. Just insert the letter V. Using V in round brackets gives us those round drop downs, while using V in square brackets gives us those box drop downs. And another important tip is that if we type the name of an existing Scratch block, let's say like the if on edge bounce block, the block will automatically change this color to match the category it belongs to but it quite doesn't work for blocks like the if block the blocks which have certain inputs or conditions and so for that we can create boolean blocks using angle brackets basically everything on those operator blocks and reporter blocks using the round brackets just like that and next up our C block. You know those blocks that shape like a C? Yeah, I had no idea they were officially called like that. By using the same syntax, we can create these C blocks as well. Just like that, we can create the if block, the repeat, and the forever. Awesome. And uh, let's say if we want to break out of a C block, well, for that, just use the keyword end at the end. So if our C block ends here, you can add the end keyword to break out from the C block and then type rest of your code. And if your C block is at the end of a script, don't worry, Scratch block will automatically close it for us. You don't need to add an end block. And another really cool trick with all these C blocks is that if we want multiple branches inside a C block, we can use curly braces instead of using the end keyword and pop in our code inside those curly braces. So using this technique, we could create blocks that have three branches like this, which is really, really cool. And that pretty much wraps up for all the basic and useful syntax. And now we are getting into the fun stuff, things to make our blocks chaotic. Starting off with changing the category of any block, all you need to do is just type double colons followed by the category name after the block. And boom, our blocks now part of that category. You can even change the category of pre-existing blocks to make them really confused. The next tip is to changing the color of any block. Let's say if you want to change the color not to the default one but something custom. And for that just add a hex color code after the double colons and watch our block change to whatever color we want. Another really cool trick is changing the shape of our block. Well, scratch blocks have all different types of shape and it's really easy to apply them. All you need to do is to specify the keyword of the shape, whether it should be an event head block, a motion stack, a pen reporter, a control cap, or even an operator boolean. Heck, we could even make it look like a cap block using the cat keyword which is awesome. And don't worry because we are not quite done yet because we can also add icons to our block by using the at sign and specifying the icon name. For example, we could type add green flag to use the green flag or any other commands like the stop sign, turn right, turn left, and loop arrow for the symbol in those repeat blocks. And a really important thing to know is make sure the letters are capitalized correctly, case really matters here. Finally, if you are done crafting your masterpiece just like we have done here, we can download our block as a PNG or SVG. So with all the syntax we covered, we can create custom blocks that are totally wild, never seen before and use them just for fun or even do it for something useful like sharing on forums, adding to websites, tutorials, or even to help explain code to others. 
and that pretty much wraps things up for this short video and if you like this video make sure to give this video a like and consider subscribing and yep see you in the next one